When I was asked the question, what type of reader are you? I don't really think about it, but in this case, I'm more than happy to provide a little bit of input. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. You're with Chris and today I'll be talking about what makes me tick as a reader and how I approach my reading. Now I was watching Becky over at the Bookish Bryants last night and she is going to do a live stream where she wants as many answers as possible to the question, how do you approach your reading and what kind of reader are you? Because she's uh, uh, reached out to as many booktubers as she can to get a, a fairly wide consensus on uh, how this question can be answered and uh, I thought look uh, I'm happy to provide some input uh, you know I'm more than happy to do that for Becky so uh, this one's for you Becky all right now first and foremost what kind of reader am I recently I became a mood reader and the reason I became a mood reader is because month after month after month when I used to do TBR lists and things like that more often than not I wouldn't stick to the list because I'm too much of a, a free spirit when it comes to reading uh, I felt um, chained down uh, with TBRs because I go on the internet a lot and I research books a lot and I pay attention to what people are reading and things like that and I, I'm guilty for jumping on quite a few bandwagons uh, while I did have a TBR mapped out for any particular month and so now um, you know, a few months ago, I just did away with TBRs because one morning I might want to wake up and uh, start reading a bit more Harry Potter or I might just pick up a classic on a whim. Uh, even um, something that's uh, very eminent uh, for my reading on the channel, I was procrastinating about reading Shogun and I was going to read it in December and then I shifted it to January. But then even though I planned on wanting to read Shogun in January, now it's um, slipped back a little bit more and I'm pushing it back a little bit more because I'm being caught up in the excitement of Brandon Sanderson. The waves he is making um, in the book industry at the moment is phenomenal and especially with the excitement that uh, Wind and Truth, I think the name is, of book five of the Stormlight Archive is coming out in December. And I thought it's high time I jump into the Cosmere and more in particular the Stormlight Archive. So now um, I was going to read Shogun but now I am hoping to read The Way of Kings in January instead. So you can imagine if I had a TBR with Shogun and a few other things and then I'd get um, uh, halfway through the month and then I'd probably just pick up the Way of Kings because I'm very, very um, uh, sporadic in my uh, reading habits. So uh, this time I've decided to go with the Way of Kings because I would like to read uh, the first four books before the uh, new uh, release comes out in December because I, you know, I'm like a FOMO reader, a fear of missing out. What I want to do is read uh, The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance, Oathbringer and Rhythm of War spread out over one every couple of months so that by the time I've finished reading Rhythm of War, I'm ready for the latest book and I can take part in that anticipation, that collective excitement that is building uh, within uh, the Stormlight Archives readership and Brandon Sanderson's fan base. So I want to be a part of that. And, you know, I haven't read a lot of fantasy and I really do want to get my hands dirty next year with uh, some really good fantasy books. So uh, that's just an example of how my psyche or how my mind works as a reader. All right, now, whenever I'm in my comfort zone, a latest book or a series uh, installment is automatic for me. I automatically know it's going to be good because I trust the author. So I guess the most appropriate response to this question is for any time I'm faced with the prospect of reading a new book or a new author that I haven't read before. So there's a lot of procrastination involved before I even choose a book. What I uh, There's been a couple of examples uh, with this. For example, I read, um, this year I read Grady Hendrix's um, My Best Friend's Exorcism. Now, I didn't just pick that up on a whim and just read it. I tend to do a bit of research before I dive into a book. And uh, I mean, the cover alone, I've discussed it on the channel, um, how good that book was. And it was a surprise. And beforehand, I went online and went on to Goodreads and uh, read what people thought of it. 
and I watch booktube reviews just to get an idea of what the book's about, what people think about it and whether or not I would like it. So uh, I'm very, very cautious uh, in that sense and turns out I absolutely loved it. So, um, you know, mainly on this channel, I uh, my default genre is thrillers. I absolutely love thrillers. Uh, it's my favorite genre of all time. And there are many ingredients that I need for, um, for me to read a decent book. And uh, things like pacing is very important to me in a book, okay? Uh, lots of chapters is very important to me and attracts me as a reader because sometimes I uh, you have a lot of interruptions when you're reading and things like that and it's always good that uh, you can stop uh, at the end of a chapter when the chapter is very short and you can also squeeze one or two or three chapters in here and there whenever you get a chance and I think that's a very very good format but it also provides really good pacing in that respect because um, chapters end on a cliffhanger and if you've um, just smashed through a chapter in uh, about two minutes well you obviously want to keep reading and that sort of thing and a classic um, example of something like this format would be in uh, Assassin 18 which is a new release which I've managed to get my hands on in digital format because I couldn't find this anywhere uh, in trade paperback and it's a classic example of having I think it's got about 200 chapters in it uh, and I read the first uh, book of this series uh, last year and absolutely loved it so I'm uh, really stoked that I've got this one and I plan on reading this over the Christmas break but uh, it's just an example of um, lots of chapters can actually really appeal to you and that's something that really attracts me as a reader whenever I'm uh, considering a new thriller book, for example. Okay, now it's got to have things like a great hook. It's got to draw me in right away. And if I read the first page and the writing is really good and draws me in, well, I'm there. Okay, uh, it has to have multi-dimensional characters. They're important. Now, uh, Becky discussed the, um, the comparison between um, whether or not you are a reader who favours story over characters or the other way around. For me, it's a little bit different. I mean, uh, the characters carry the plot, okay? But the story itself has to be interesting and compelling for me to keep reading. I think the characters just follow along naturally. Uh, but there are a lot of character-driven uh, books out there which uh, work very well uh, also. But most important thing, it's got to have, um, where possible, an irresistible twist ending. And I can reel off the examples. Uh, one that comes to mind immediately is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. In my uh, award show uh, for um, singling out my favourite books of 2023 recently, uh, this particular book uh, was my favourite um, book with a twist of 2023. Now, it not only had one twist, it had two twists towards the end and made me want to pick up more of Riley Sager's work. It was a phenomenal book. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it was a really, really worthy winner for that category on the uh, award show. So if you haven't checked that out, please do. Now, um, before all this happens though, as I touched upon earlier, I do a fair bit of research. So, um, for example, you know I want to read The Way of Kings and go into the Cosmere. So what I had been doing leading up to wanting to read that is to watch a few booktube videos or what they call primers. So it gives you a bit of background information on what you can expect. Uh, I've watched booktubers reviews, uh, spoiler free of course, just to see if it'll grab me. And then of course I've just um, seen so many favourable reviews everywhere uh, on the internet including Goodreads. So it's got uh, a 4.6 out of 5 star rating I believe. So something like that, uh, it really excites me. And now that I've done my research and I'm satisfied that I may enjoy the book, I'm uh, ready to dive in. And I may even start it um, in the last week of uh, December, maybe even a few days before New Year's because I, uh, instead of starting right on New Year's Day, I thought I'll start a few days earlier. So I'm really, really excited. I've got a beautiful hard hardcover of the book, which will be a pleasure to read. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that. But um, now, let's talk about DNFing a book, which is part of what makes up a reader, in my opinion, and what my patience level is before I decide to put a book down. Now, I had a really extreme example this year of a really quick DNF. Um, 
this particular book called The Drowning by Brian Brown. Yes, he is the actor of the same name that appeared in Cocktail with Tom Cruise and a slew of Australian roles. So I thought, you know, he's the um, typical Aussie larrikin. Okay, and I thought I'll give his book a go. It looks like a, a local crime novel. Ah, 12 pages in, I had to put it down. I couldn't read it. And I'm ashamed to say that I returned it uh, where I bought it from. Because there is a lot of really good Australian crime out there. Um, but this particular book, yes, Brian Brown is Australian and I appreciate slang and the way um, some people uh, talk and that's what he put into his writing. So the thing that bugged me was the premise looked interesting enough but all the slang he used, he laid it on too thick and it distracted me from the story and did not sustain my interest. And I just thought, I said to my wife, this is shit. And she's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, um, just put it down. Don't want to deal with it anymore. Don't want to try it again. I'm done with it. So, but then on the other uh, flip side, I'm fairly generous with some as well. I mean, I read the, um, started to read the uh, book five of the Malazan Book of the Fallen, which was uh, Midnight Tides. I had three attempts and put it down again. But, uh, you know, gave it 100 pages, which was pretty generous. And I will go back to it. That's not one where I'll just uh, never read it again. But uh, maybe just wasn't the right time with where my mind was at so uh, on the other end of the scale you know I can be pretty generous before DNFing a book another one that comes to mind was the, a new James Bond book that uh, came out and what the writer did with some of the characters was just appalling uh, I didn't agree with it I mean for example uh, you know who uh, Q is from Q Branch that's, uh, who provides um, James Bond with all his gadgetry well, they made him an AI computer, for God's sake. He wasn't even a real real man, and just, yeah, it just uh, really disappointed me. But uh, on the whole, I'm usually pretty easygoing, and I'll give the benefit of the doubt where it's needed, and uh, will usually be fairly generous um, before I DNF a book. But, you know, I generally don't uh, DNF too many books as a rule. But um, yeah, between ca coming back to characters or plot, I think they're a much of a muchness for me. I think they're both as important as one another. So I don't really have a preference as such, as long as the writing is really good. And <clears throat> I think an important ingredient too for a book that you want to read is the writing has to be really accessible. What I mean by that is you get some writers who, uh, you know, you, you find sometimes you struggling to get into a book and then it begins to pick up because you're not used to the writer's style so there tends to be a bit of a um, an adjustment period there and then once things get moving it's fine but there are some writers who um, draw you in straight away because their writing is very very accessible in a flowing manner what I mean by that and I'll use a classic example here of uh, Frieda McFadden who is an author I've discovered recently who I absolutely love. This book, uh, I'm not going to review this one on the channel. I'm done with my reviews for the year. I'm only doing a handful of videos um, with uh, end of year uh, summaries and things like that. And of course, this special uh, video for Becky. But um, this has an insane twist that left me reeling. Um, it was just absolutely incredible. A, uh, a An ex-con. Uh, can't believe her luck when she's hired by uh, a rich couple to uh, babysit and clean and all that sort of thing. And uh, the behaviour of uh, Nina, her boss, is very, very erratic. And uh, it's like um, she's being, you know, the main character in this one is being gaslit. And um, all sorts of revelations are revealed. And then this massive twist at the end as to uh, why Nina was like she was. It was just fantastic. But a perfect example of how good writing is accessible writing so that um, it's very very smooth the language used is very simple there's no um, opulent descriptions or anything like that that go on for pages and pages uh, Frieda McFadden gets straight into the story and right now I am actually reading the follow-up The Housemaid's Secret which was a winner of one of the Goodreads Readers Choice Awards this year as well um, so loving that one as well and another example of a compelling story and a really good character is this particular book here. Now, 
This is The Year of the Locust by Terry Hayes. He wrote I Am Pilgrim, but I haven't actually read that. I did buy it recently because I do want to read it. But this book, I think it's safe to let the cat out of the bag. For those of you who haven't seen my uh, Bookish Brilliance Awards on the channel, um, don't forget to take a look at that. But if you uh, haven't seen that, uh, ignore this, but it's hard to ignore when I've already held up the book. So um, without, without warning you first. But this book is my book of the year. <clears throat> it was my favorite book of 2023. And it was quite unexpected. Um, I brought it uh, thinking that, oh, this looks really good. I didn't realize it was the same author who wrote I Am Pilgrim because I remember when I Am Pilgrim came out in uh, about 2012, I think it was, don't quote me, but um, picked it up, instantly smitten with the book, the character, and uh, I had a real good appreciation of what Terry Hayes did in terms of um, hanging his balls out there and taking a massive risk uh, because uh, a lot of the readership was very divisive about the book uh, with what he decided uh, to do in the last portion of the book and uh, I actually loved it. So it was a very, very worthy winner uh, there. But just a couple of examples of all the ingredients that go into a book that I want to read and what attracts me to books in the first place. So that is my take. I hope I've answered your question there, Becky, and I look forward to seeing what other booktubers contribute to this as well, because it's a very good question that, uh, you know, I didn't really think about before uh, seeing Becky's video on this. And uh, it's a very relevant question because it's not asked very often and no one talks about this. And I thought this is a really good way to get some exposure on what makes other booktubers or readers tick as well. So this is my contribution. So uh, there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Offer up any feedback, of course, as always. And yeah, until my next video, guys, happy reading.